um, so this um, this uh, project is uh, Fitzroy uh, Fitzroy Bridge House. It is a, involves an adaptation of a significant terrace house within the South Fitzroy Heritage Precinct, and is within another heritage precinct with that of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Built in 1854, the dwelling resides at the end of a terrace row of four, with an 80 block of flats to its north side. Uh, the property spans a long, thin swipe site, orientated east-west, faces Napier Street towards the front, and Little Napier at the rear. Fitzroy. So South Fitzroy is uh, Melbourne's first suburb, known for its attached Victorian-era housing, predominantly solid masonry, face of red and brick, solid high, void, solid, uh, high solid to void ratios, and zero lot line setbacks. The neighbourhood contains rich examples of intricate brickwork, thought-link, capping, archways, and the ornate, ornate and more exuberant detail of 19th century uh, Victorian styles such as Italianate. Victoria, uh, sorry, Fitzroy is known for its distinctive laneways, some with substantial boundary walls containing stable and loft structures. Before we commenced, as we like to do, we did a walk around the neighbourhood and an in-depth study of the history of the site and area. And indeed, a lot of the history of the area can be found in the laneways. Interesting evidence of night soil hatches, as well as brick details, make for interesting and idiosyncratic aspects. These photos give you a sense of the laneways in the early days, with built up form, fronting boundaries, and when laneways had a greater purpose. The subject site contained a chequered history. For most of its life, it operated as an apartment house, a kind of shared accommodation commercial premises. And from the MMBW plan in 1899, you can see that the site is actually an amalgamation of 51 Napier Street and, and at the rear, uh, 21 Little Napier. As you can see, uh, the lane, where the laneways were behind uh, the, the subject site, um, would have been used for horse and carriage to pick up night soil. This is a photo of uh, Little Napier in 1899 where buildings were fronting onto it and the aerial photo from 50 years later shows that little, the Little Napier building had been demolished and the subject site was further extended, uh, presumably to fit more lodges. Um, so that's just a little bit of the history. There were uh, existing rooms when we came to, sorry, these are the existing photos when we came to the project and even up until recent times, the 1970s, it was shown that it continued to be used as a lodging quarters. And, and word has it there was even a house of ill repute at, at some stage. Uh, the existing photos illustrate the rear wing had been heavily adapted. Uh, these are the existing floor plans. So it's a long kind of skinny finger at the back. First floor rooms, uh, wall south facing. From a heritage point of view, the terrace row of four was graded significant, largely for their facades as an uh, example of intact terrace housing within a heritage overlay. So it's, it's a heritage overlay only, it's not state listed. Um, so demolish, demolition of the rear wing was permitted as long as new works didn't adversely affect uh, the streetscape. Um, so we went about doing reasonably deep research on the history of the site and what um, a new architecture might be. Um, and in this case, as opposed to providing a newly attached contrasting addition, an off-supported um, heritage approach, uh, our approach was instead uh, set out as a series of self-similar, um, separate, muse-like outbuildings separated by full-width courtyards. The client's objectives were to bring light and air into the centre of the long, thin site, maximise the upper level footprint through reduction of stairs, and provide a self-contained rear bedroom and garage studio, above a garage studio, with separate rear access for modern-gen living. Um, Muse. The idea of Muse buildings in Victorian times were subsidiary buildings built behind a larger front house that faced the main street. They were separated by courtyards and backed direct onto laneways, traditionally housing living quarters at the first floor level and the ability to open up a ground floor level for horse and carriage, night soil access and the like. Reinterpreting the character of massing, uh, the programmatic objectives are similar with a series of three two-storey buildings housing sleeping quarters above and linked by an open living breezeway beneath, containing flexible living spaces that straddle two landscaped courtyards. The floor plan contains essentially living spaces at ground level, sitting, dining, courtyard, open kitchen living meals, second small courtyard and garage studio at the rear. And upstairs is effectively all sleeping, adults sleeping at the front, kids in the middle, grandparents at the rear. And in a sense, we liked that this, uh, this approach was actually returning the site closer to what it was in the 1800s, um, and ironically, in the process, actually making it far more responsive. The offsetting of the new buildings from the old also allowed conveniently for soft connections between old and new. 
openness and light to the main courtyard is acquired through the intervention of a glass-roofed covered way to the north and an elevated glass bridge shifted to the south for solar access. Somewhat unconventional, this move unlocks the courtyard, providing equal ability to aid privacy as it does solar access and provide for a borrowed amenity between the levels as one looks down over the manicured garden. From the front, the original masonry facade was carefully preserved and restored. The cracked basalt threshold and non-original tiles were sensitively replaced. And other conservation aspects included restoration of render and mouldings. Uh, the original antique brass fittings that had been painted over were carefully taken back and reinstalled. Um, in the demolition of the rear wing, all bricks were salvaged and reused, ensuring that new work came intrinsically out of the old. And even, uh, even though the new pavilions are, are new, we like that it feels like they might be old. They're remade from the existing stock and have that patina of an old, an old brick. The gesture of repeating a set of arched windows at the end of the building pays a nod to local Italianate architecture and connects the bedrooms visually at the upper level, aiding in cons consistency and connection between the buildings in keeping with the history of the site and the neighbourhood. When viewed from the public realm of Little Napier Street, the three buildings are unified in their material, material texture, colour and solidity. And while there is some distinction by the separation of buildings, in this case we felt it was an appropriate heritage, heritage result that they were integrated. Internally from the front, the strategy was one of restoration and sensitive upgrading. This is the first room, which might have been a drawing room, and is depicted true to its time in a darker, more intimate uh, colour, or a hue, that, in contrast to the remainder of the ground floor, which is about receiving light. Within the existing building, colour coding of original walls is allocated based on its story. For example, the nude pastel colour which adorns the original walls is a play on the hue of Victorian times, whilst newer walls are depicted in white. Douglas fir floorboards are used in the front pavilion, interpretive of Baltic pine, whereas Australian hardwood is used in the rear pavilion. The new stairway brings light down through the original double hung window of the existing wall and opportunities are taken internally where appropriate to allow for the act of revealing and expose, exposing the trace of original materials. Here the legacy of the original brickwork to the front facade is revealed in the ensuite, whilst the render and paint of the boundary wall was removed to reveal the night soil or service hatch moments of a previous time, adding to the richness and the, the act of storytelling within the dwelling. Directly behind the front building hides an inner courtyard and the sounds of the zen-like garden inspired by the Asian heritage of the client, Interior, exterior landscape where it approaches an integrated idea. The detailing and profiling of brickwork provides a contextual play of the local laneway architecture. And in, in a nod to the Muse buildings um, of London, where historic service quarters have been converted over time to self-contained studios and workplaces, uh, this studio has flexibility to, to do the same now or into the future. With rear access for multi-gen visitors, it allows for this space to change over time Paying a nod to the reactivation of laneways as community spaces and to accommodate the future densification of cities. Um, final comment designed as a home for the family, resulting conversion celebrates the legacy of the site and surrounds material authenticity and creative adaptations to enable responsive family living on a challenging site.